Hello, beginning farmer friends. It is breezy out today, so I hope you can hear me. It is time. I've got the tools collected. I've got the lumber collected. Hey there, beginning farmer friends. I am coming to you from the future as evidenced by the cromer and the dead grass and well, it's a lot different weather than it is in this current video that you're watching right now. But I'm coming here because I've got a very important announcement I want to share while I'm watering these weanling calves up here in the front. Well, I guess the calves weren't that thirsty, but the big news is that we've now got stuff on our website, crookedgapfarm.com, or better yet, you can go down to the link below in the description that we can sell and ship. Now, unfortunately, it is not pork, but we've got some pretty cool beginning farmer t-shirts like this green one here. It's got the big pig beginning farmer logo on it. We've also got these uh, pretty awesome like tan and brown or brown and brown, whatever you want to call it. They're like a three quarter length sleeve t-shirt. They're pretty awesome. Of course, we've got this awesome beginning farmer logo sticker. We've also got soap that we can ship on our website. That's very cool. Handcrafted by my wife on our farm using the lard from our hogs. But the thing that I'm most excited about is this. This is the mouse in our house never ending game. This is a game my wife created for our kids. We homeschool if you didn't know that yet. And so we've had six kids in our house for a long time. Now our oldest has grown up and he is on to college now, but we still are playing since 2014, the mouse in our house game. What you do is you hide the mouse. Well. I'll let my wife explain at the end of the video, but it's a never ending game with a hidden mouse and magnets that you move on the fridge. It is awesome stuff. And the reason that I interjected into this video now is because if you order in the next few days, it's Monday, December 11th. If you order, no, it is Monday, December 12th. If you order in the next few days, we'll be able to ship these out to you before Christmas. Or if you don't need them for Christmas, you can order whenever you want, as long as we have them again link in the description below. If you watch the rest of this video, which I encourage you to do, if for no other reason than to get to the end of the video, I'm gonna play the video describing the mouse, or a mouse in our house, uh, never ending game. I need to start building this shed. Let me give you, or no, it's not a shed. It's a room within the shed. Let me give you the basic rundown, but before I give you the basic rundown, let me tell you this. There is an expression out there in the world Jack of all trades, master of none. If you're feeling pretty confident, you know, maybe some people say jack of all trades, master of some. There's also the expression, you know, I know enough to be dangerous. Well, the truth with me is I am not a jack of any trades, it seems like. I am a master of nothing, and uh, I have no idea what I'm about to start. I'm a little bit intimidated. The uh, thing about this YouTube channel is that it's great is that, you know, you guys can give advice. The downside is by the time you see this video, it'll already be done and I probably won't go back and redo it. So let me tell you what the plan is. I've got two of these treated boards. This one is 12 foot. That is to go along the 12 foot edge here. Then I've got a 16 foot treated board. That is to go along this 16 foot edge here. The reason I'm putting the treated boards down is because it's a shed, all right? And there's gonna be tractors coming in with snow. And then I just wanted something treated down at the bottom so water coming up against it, it'll, you know, have a better chance of lasting longer. I'm gonna anchor that down to the concrete and then I'm gonna build my wall on the ground, set it up and nail my wall down into this board right here. I have no idea what I'm doing is what I'm trying to say, but the only thing that I can do is get started. I'm gonna take a measurement here, then I'm gonna cut my board, my treated two by four, and then I'm gonna screw it down with some Tapcons. 134 and three quarters.
the next thing that I have to do is figure out how tall my studs need to be so I can cut them and then I also need to cut to length my bottom boards and my top boards. Um, this is 96 and 3 quarters to the top of here. I'm going to have two boards on the bottom, two boards on the top. Let's do some math. Okay, so with 96 and 3 quarters being the height from the floor to the bottom of my ceiling, probably the best way to put it, and that means I need to have 90 and 3 quarter inch studs. So I'm going to go get my studs, I'm going to cut those all the length, I'm going to get my bottom plate and my top plate, so my one white untreated 2x4 to go on the bottom and my two on the top, I'm going to cut those to length as well. And then I think what I'm going to do is just on the floor, I am going to start building this, putting this together, and then from there we'll figure out how to build the front wall. No big deal. All right, I think I've got everything laid out where it needs to be, 16 inches on center. I think that's how things are built. Now, I'm gonna nail this. I mean, in theory, this wall should go quick. We'll see how quick it goes. Side number one is done. Sure is a lot faster with this, of course. If I was a professional, I wouldn't need it, but I'm not even a beginner. I do want to say just if you are a builder or if you have worked in construction or trades, just two things. One, thank you very much. It is amazing what you are able to do. And two, I'm sorry. I'm sorry for the way that I do this. I should probably get a level, shouldn't I? I'll be right back. There's something that gets said on this farm a lot, and that is good enough for who it's for. This wall, it's getting there, okay? We are basically plumb all the way down, straight up and down. I ran the level on the edge, and we are basically plumb with the exception of we could toe out like, I don't know, like an eighth of an inch, just a, a very small bit as we've got a little bit of gap there at the top, and so, I think what I'll do is I'll end up getting some shims to shim in there and then once we put the plywood on the outside obviously at some point we'll have to account for any weirdness on especially on that end down there so the problem and this is what happens to me every time I get into a building project is this wall it was easy it was just studs it was top plates wait bottom plates top plates that one was easy this wall right here that's going to go on top of this treated two by four this wall needs to have a door down at this end right here and an air conditioner hole somewhere else maybe in this area right here and i'll just be completely honest with you i don't know how to frame either of those so here's what's going to happen now i'm going to go get on youtube because that's my best option right now. I'll go onto menards.com, pick out a door, a nice wide one, and then I'll come back out and build it. Okay, well, that was very informative. I just watched a video by the excellent laborer. Actually, two videos by the excellent laborer. So thank you, excellent laborer. I'll try to show the video and I'll definitely link it down below the ones that I watched. I watched two of them and I'm glad that I watched them because A, it looks a little easier, okay. It's not going to be easier because he's an excellent laborer and I'm a beginning farmer. It looks more doable than I thought it was going to be because I learned how to do it. And two, I also learned that I need to make a door frame for a load bearing wall since we will be putting two by 12s or two by 10s, I guess I should say 12 foot long, two by 10s for our loft up there. I'm gonna want this to be load bearing. So 
Let me get some supplies together. I'll tell you real quick what I'm gonna do. I'm not gonna teach you how to do it because the excellent laborer already did that. I've got my treated two by four laid along the front and I started putting in where my door, measuring where my door wanted to be. And as I was doing that, I realized that I had already made a mistake and it's a somewhat costly mistake. I don't know, maybe eight, nine dollar mistake. What I had done is I had made this header out of a two by 10, uh, two, yeah, one two by 10, but it's two pieces sandwiched together with some plywood in between because I need to build a load bearing header. And this is a load bearing header for above my door. I'm going to put a 36 inch door in, which according to the video that I watched said I need to make a 38 inch opening. So I made this 38 inches. The problem is that it has to sit on something. And in order to sit on something out here on the edges, it actually needs to be what, 41 inches so that a two by four can go on the inside and hold this header up. So, I've got a nice 38 inch header for sale. I don't really know what I'm gonna do with it, but we're gonna build another one that's gonna be 41 inches. That will be the proper one. And now I'm going to be two two by 10 by 12 boards short instead of just one short because I, you get the idea. After much thinking and having the camera turned off, I have the front wall all laid out. Obviously the door opening is right here. It is 41 inches from the inside to the inside of these two studs. Then I will have to do some more measuring and thinking and realize, figure out how far I need to go up here before I put my header and then the boards that hold the header up. And then in this one right here, what I need to do is figure out where the air conditioner is going to go. So this stud is laid in right now, but I'm not going to nail it in until I figure that out. What I am going to do though, I think probably is just get all this part of the wall done. Then I'll come over here. I'll measure and figure out where the air conditioner is going to go. It is progress. Thank you, YouTube, for uh, teaching me how to be a less than mediocre builder. All right, so in theory, with the two boards on the bottom, when we cut those out, it'll be 82 inches tall, which is what it is in our freezer room over there. And we're gonna get in exactly, ex exactly the same door. So it's gonna be a 36 inch by 82 inch door, I think. Everything is framed up on this. I've got some screws pre-started so I can put it down. This wall is gonna be a lot heavier because of that header and the width and all of those things. I've got a level over there. I've got some screws over there. It's not gonna be easy. Per usual on this one, there was something in the way. I'll show you in a minute. Well, it's not pretty and it probably isn't exactly like it needs to be or like a professional or semi-professional or a competent homeowner would do, but it is up and framed in. I've got my door framed in right here, header above, little boards at the top that really are nominally the right size. I've got my hole open here for my air conditioner. That's all framed in. I did not put a header on top of that because I wanted to get it up as high as possible and it's just a 19 inch gap so I don't think it'll be that big of a deal as far as load bearing weight goes so that's why I didn't do that. Let me kind of take you around, turn the camera around and show you all the mistakes and the little things that I need to fix before 
we put the plywood sheeting on the outside. So first of all, here is the problem that I ran into as I was trying to put the wall up and we had to pause and regroup. This board right here, it went too far and I, I should have noticed that before I started putting the wall up. I did not notice that so it wasn't that big of a deal. We were able to slide the wall back a little bit and then just come in with a circular saw and cut that off. The other issue that I have, and I talked about it a little bit, is this post right up here. It's got a kind of big wave in it, and what that has done, it has made this wall not very plumb and true. So now this wall is not very plumb and true. What I'm gonna do, and I think I've talked about this already, I'm gonna get some shims to go in back there, and once I do that, then this little issue right here where I've got a gap, that this wall will come out and it'll all line up plumb and true. The only thing that it's really gonna make a difference about, and I again, I mentioned this already, is we'll have to start putting our sheeting up from this side as we work down. That way we can kind of work on the, the ragged edge or the gap down there, but it, it'll work out. When all is said and done, it took longer than it should have taken to get this done today, but honestly, it took as long as an inexperienced beginning farmer should have taken. Not an excellent, what was that guy's name? Excellent, awesome laborer that, thank you again for the YouTube videos, but I am happy. It is up. Tomorrow I'm gonna come right back at it. I'm gonna start putting that sheeting up, get it enclosed. I think what I will do, I think this is the best idea, is to put my sheeting on the outside first and then we'll come up with our uh, 12 footers that are gonna go across the top. I did run out of a couple because of my whole debacle on the header, but we'll put those up and then we will put the floor on top of that. I don't know, I think it's okay. I think it's okay, it's gonna be a nice freezer room. The nicest thing about it is it's going to be much bigger than the one we have, and it's gonna allow us to reclaim some room for the house. So thank you all so much for watching. Thanks for coming along for the ride. I am sorry, I know I said it already. If you are a builder, you've worked in the construction trades, you are absolutely, without a doubt, amazing. Thank you for all you do. I know I did you no justice today in doing this. If you know what I did wrong, put them in the comments down below. But by the time the video comes out, it's probably going to be too late. A little mouse has snuck into our house. Sneaking and peeking, it's him we are seeking. Is he here? Is he there? He could be anywhere. Who will be the first to find him? A mouse in our house is the never-ending game of hide-and-seek. For two to eight players, ages four to 104, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. The game is played with a life-size realistic mouse that hides around the house. You try to be the first to find the mouse in order to hide him at the beginning of the next round. You move your game piece when you find or hide the mouse. Gameplay takes place on a magnetic game board consisting of two rows called the cookie board and the cheese board. Each player will select their own colored mouse or they may design their own mouse with permanent marker. The game board is kept on the fridge at a height all players can reach for 24-7 gameplay. Let's catch our mouse and learn how to play. To set up the game, all of the players place their magnetic mouse on the cookie board of the game board. The mouse is placed in an agreed-upon location. The youngest player then places their magnetic mouse on the cookie. This shows that they will be the first to hide the mouse. Once the player has hidden the mouse, they move their game piece to the cheese board. This motion of the game piece along with the empty location where the mouse had previously been shows that the mouse has moved and it is time to start searching. When a player finds the mouse, they will also move their game piece to the cheese board. If the cheese is yet unoccupied, they will place their game piece on the cheese, indicating they are the next player to hide the mouse. The remaining players will put their game piece on the cheese board as well as they find the mouse until all players have found the mouse and the round is complete. It is now time for the first player who found the mouse to wait for the opportune moment to rehide the mouse. After having done so, they move their game piece to the cookie board. This motion of the game piece, along with the empty location of where the mouse had previously been, shows the other players that it is time to once again start searching. The player who first finds the mouse gets to place their game piece on the cookie, indicating they will be the next to hide the mouse. The remaining players move their game piece to the cookie board as well when they find the mouse until all remaining players have found the mouse and the round is complete. It is now time to re-hide the mouse and thus continues the never-ending game of hide and seek. There are some basic rules for playing a mouse in our house. These include rules for hiding the mouse, rules for the mouse, the time frame to find the mouse, tips for younger players, and a fair warning for when you start the game.
The rules for hiding the mouse are to keep the mouse hidden in agreed upon rooms at a level for all players to see. Keep the mouse in plain sight, which means do not cover the mouse. The mouse needs to stay out of the way of daily activities, and of course, keep the mouse out of reach of young children and pets. The rules for the mouse are pretty simple. The mouse needs to stay put until the entire round is done. The advice for the players is to play the game as if you were the mouse. Remain quiet and sneaky. Hide the mouse when no one is around. Quietly look for the mouse without the other players knowing what you are doing. And if you have found the mouse, or if you have recently hidden the mouse, move your magnet when no one is around. There is no specific time frame to find the mouse. It is best to let the game naturally unfold as you go about your daily activities around the house. You can choose to have a reveal date on a certain day or week of the month, or you can choose to play hot versus cold with the players still seeking the mouse if the mouse is taking an unusually long time to find. For younger players who are learning to play the game, you can start with the adult being the permanent hider. After all players have found the mouse, the player who first found the mouse receives a high five, and then everyone waits again for the adult to rehide the mouse. Alternately, you can rotate through who hides the mouse at the beginning of the next round. Also, younger children might want to partner with an older player before using their own game piece. This will help them learn the motion of the game pieces. And lastly, for a fair warning, players can become quite engrossed in searching for the mouse when you first start the game. You might want to start the game on a lazy day or weekend, as you allow the mouse to naturally become a part of your household. A little mouse has snuck into our house, sneaking and peeking. It's him we are seeking. Is he here? Is he there? He could be anywhere. Who will be the first to find him?